Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the Castro Valley Unified School District Board meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. Now we did wanted to see if there are any public comment um, on any of the closed session items, which is conference with negotiators for government code, uh, personnel report, or a conference with legal counsel. So let's see if I have any hands raised. I do not. Given that there is no public comment, we will recess to closed session and return to open session at 5 p.m. So thank you, and we will see you soon. Now that we are all here, we are going to be convened to open session. And welcome to our board meeting, Shane. If you could please uh, lead us in the um, Pledge of Allegiance, it'd be greatly appreciated. Of course, um, it's good to see you all. All right, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Shane. Um, report out from closed session. Um, we did not take any action in closed session. Approval of the agenda. We'll move approval of the agenda as amended. I'll second. Then moved and seconded. Any further discussion? And I think we lost the I think we lost there she is. Let's wait one moment for our final voting as Joe comes back online. So um, approval of the agenda as amended has been moved and seconded with an uh, amended personnel report. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And Joe, we can't hear or see you. That one. Oh, I can hear you now, but I cannot see you. Um, is your vote aye? No. You're just talking about speakers, not microphone. Oh, speakers. I, wanna... I will give it one moment. While she works out her technical difficulties. I'm here. I'm sorry. No worries. I'm back. Um, we we're voting on the. Um, we'll we'll do that one more time. We're voting on uh, approving the um, agenda. Can we just say all those in favor one more time? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five zero. Thank you. Mission statement, Trustee Howard. In partnership with the community, Castro Valley Unified School District 
educate students in a learning environment that is safe, nurturing, and culturally responsive. Students are guided by excellent, inspired staff, utilizing innovative instruction, curricula, and technology. Thank you, Trustee Howard. For those of us, uh, you joining us uh, on the phone, for public comment, the board respects and encourages the public to comment on matters on the board agenda and within the board's jurisdiction. The board fully supports civil discourse and requests that everyone respect each other and their point of view. Individuals who would like to address the board must raise your hand during the start of the agenda item. So when the agenda item starts, that's when you raise your hand, not before, please. Um, to comment by video conference, click the raise your hand button and to connect by phone, raise your hand by pressing star nine to request to speak when public comment is being taken on the eligible agenda item. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will then be re-muted. Individual speakers are asked to limit their comments to no more than three minutes, and there are up to 30 minutes of public comment allowed on each agenda item. With board consensus, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed. This meeting is being recorded to prepare the official minutes. And I'm excited our next agenda item um, Shane, we get to have your first student board member report. Yeah, I'm so excited to be working with you. Um, so all of our schools have been working to adjust to our virtual setting, teachers creating that sense of a classroom community and schools ensuring that all students have the resources to function during distance learning, whether it be giving out Chromebooks or virtual support. Our high school is looking into having a virtual concert with a rising artist named Emily Vu. Her record label reached out to our activities director, Mr. Mal Mr. Maloney, and the leadership class is working on coordinating that. Um, our high school and our ASB vice president, Lauren Green, is currently working on organizing a community closet where students can donate clothes and students interested or in need can pick them up, sort of like an online thrift store. Um, admin is working with the high school leadership class and PTSA to move our merchandise to an online shop. And the middle schools and high schools are using their allotted Trojan time and tutorial periods to help students navigate our online learning applications. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate it. Um, next item is the California School Employees Association and Castro Valley Teachers Association reports. CSCA, do we have Ms. Fink with us today? Do not see Robin. And we know that Mark Mladenich um, could not make it tonight due to some family obligations. So we will move forward uh, to public comment for items not on the agenda. So I do not see any hands raised for items not on the agenda. We'll move on to the consent agenda. This is an action I'll, item. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Second it. Shane, your preferential vote? Yes. Is there any further discussion? I just wanted to make a quick note. Um, within the, there is a res resolution September 15th to October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month. And I just wanted to recognize in the district we are a very diverse district and just wanted to recognize that that is taking place. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Reports, discussions, and action items. Um, item 8A, approve the personnel report as amended. I'll move approval of the personnel report as amended. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. And just so you know, Shane, we don't have you vote on personnel items, but we'll have you vote on other items. Item 8B, update on 2020 maintenance, operation and transportation and measure G summary projects. 
Susie. Yes, so Miss Chen is going to introduce uh, Mr. Krebs, but I do want to say, I, I want to share my uh, gratitude about all the work that um, MOT has done um, and Susie Chan and um, her whole um, division. So we're excited to hear from Mr. Krebs. Susie. Yes, we're actually, I'm looking at the uh, panelists and attendees. I don't see both Mr. Krebs and Ms. True Quinns. And so um, let's give them, let me just see. Okay, so um, Mr. Krebs is going to log in now and uh, Sharon will follow. So while we're waiting, um, as uh, Ms. Ahmadi said, we, uh, uh, Gary Krebs, the Director of Maintenance and Operations and Trans Transportation, um, they've been really busy. Uh, as you know, uh, they've been working um, all uh, spring as well as summer to try uh, to prepare our site. Um, and uh, with, uh, with everything that's going on um, with additional PPE um, that we have acquired and also preparing our sites for when uh, uh, staff comes back and also, um, uh, also planning a, uh, a, um, a putting together protocols, I should say, putting together protocols for staff and also for when students return. Um, we have, uh, they've been working on a lot of the summer projects and, you, uh, and you've seen their presentations every year. And this is really the time where we want to showcase uh, or uh, give you like a, a glimpse of all of that uh, in, uh, work that they've done. Um, we, as you know, hired a um, operations supervisor, Aaron uh, Ackerman, and so he's been um, uh, great and uh, Mr. Krebs and uh, Aaron have been working together to, to, to prepare our sites and make sure that all the work that needed to be completed were completed. And so I believe he is on. And I, I don't see him, but I do see Sharon. Maybe what we can do is we're gonna, we'll, um, we had planned to have Gary Krebs uh, present the slides and then uh, followed by uh, Sharon True Quinns. Um, but I think, so I see uh, uh, Ms. Sharon True Quinns now, and so we'll, we'll ask uh, her to uh, start first. But uh, similar to what um, the maintenance uh, and operations department did, Sharon and her team as well have done a lot of work with Measure G. Measure G, um, uh, a lot of projects that are, we wanted to make sure that we're, we complete, especially the HVAC upgrades at the elementary schools. And so we're very happy about that. And I know Sharon will I'll share more information um, uh, as she goes through the slides. Sharon? Good evening. Um, so we'll wait for the screen to come on. Uh, yes, we've been busy. Um, uh, one of the good things is that we, we've had uh, more time to work on the sites, um, even with the given constraints. It, uh, uh, it does work to a little bit of our advantage to get more work done and we'll have uh, the schools ready for the students when they're back. Um, next slide, please. So um, things we've been, we've been doing a lot of exterior painting work along with the interior and renovations because since we don't have lots, you know, students on site, we can move the machines around a lot easier and tape things off. And so we have independent elementary, a, a bunch of the elementary schools. So we've done uh, exterior painting. We have a picture of kind of a before picture shot on the top left and we have some, um, most of the schools were doing kind of a, a kind of a quick updating. We're also standardizing the the field color, kind of the off white color that we're using. It's the same color we used at Canyon at the high school, and each color each school gets to kind of pick their trim color. So they're blue um, to go with Independence color. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. Next slide, please, and. We, interior work, the library, we worked on 
redoing a little bit of the case work. We did new carpeting, um, repair the ceiling tiles, new painting. Um, next slide. And uh, a big thing that's been happening that we're, we're still working on is the power upgrade, our electrical, um, new electrical switch gears for both independent, Stanton, and uh, an added power for Proctor, which we'll look at later. So we're, um, we're on the schedule for the 28th for pg e to come and energize our new switch gears. And so we should be back up and running hopefully in a week after that. So we have, um, we have the parts of the sites um, on temporary power right now, but I want to show some of the, the, the picture on the left is like demo work. We have to pretty much dismantle all of the switch gear and then um, trench and bring all the conduits and uh, cables in and then work on putting everything back together. Um, so next slide. And so just some kind of just show, I want to just show a few picture shots of like all the more of almost minute details of what happens in like a power upgrade. It's, you just can't like take the cabinet and just move it out of the way. It's just, it's a lot more involved in just making sure all the little pieces get removed properly and things get put back in properly. So next slide. And then this is Proctor. We have um, on the up, the upper left is kind of the trenching that happens for the power upgrade. Uh, for Proctor, for Independent and Stanton, we pretty much switched out the whole switch gear for the site. So we had to actually cut off power for the whole site. Proctor, we were able to add a new one. So they were able to work side by side. So the power actually never went off at Proctor, at most for a few hours. Um, and <clears throat> because we had the room to work around the Proctor. And along with the exterior painting that you'll see later, the top left, no, top right picture shows kind of what the site kind of colors used to look like. It also shows like on the ground, all of the things we took off of the building. There was a lot of just cables that were old, that were unused. There was a lot of cleanup as we're going, not just, you know, repainting the buildings, but cleaning up a lot of the things that are just kind of hanging around that doesn't need to be there anymore. Um, we. Uh, redid the far lane that goes to the upper field. That's the bottom picture. Uh, next slide, please. And then Susie, Sharon, um, yes. Gary's on the line with us now. I didn't know if you noticed or not, but welcome, Mr. Crow. Hi, Gary. <laughs> um, and so I'll continue. So with the um, we have the extra painting for Proctor. Proctor essentially has the same colors as, as Independent. What we're, also, we're also standardizing some of the palettes um, so that it's easier for maintenance when they're going back to have to touch up paint or um, repaint certain things over the years. Um, so we have some shots of before in the top left corner and the new uh, paint on the NPR in the classroom building. So next slide. Um, some of the walkways and the eaves in the buildings. We also worked on kind of the little details, the school sign also. Um, next slide. On the live um, interior work, we focus a lot on the library building, which has, it's, live, it's kind of the library and, at the middle and then classrooms and computer lab all around um, the outside. So we redid the library with new carpet, uh, paintings and repaired the ceilings and um, we also worked on the restrooms. Next slide please. And some of the classrooms. Um, I wanted to show like if you look on the picture on the upper, um, sorry, it's the right, lower right, it shows kind of as we're working on the HVAC, like uh, Proctor has this old boiler system that's in um, the buildings. And so we took, and that's, you, you see the picture of kind of that's the old machinery that's there. So as we're putting in new HVAC, we're also trying to reclaim some of the space. So we took out that cabinet and all the mechanical in there. And then on the upper right, you see the new cabinet that we put in to give the teacher more storage space, which is always a plus um, and a need. Um, 
want to show the upper left is shows kind of us also working with um, the custodians in terms of, you know, after the new floors are done, it gives them more space before we move things back in to like lay out the classroom rugs as they're cleaning, well, you know, part of coordinating with summer cleaning. Um, so next slide. Uh, more pg e upgrades. So um, picture on the left is pg e coming in and removing um, their equipment. And then at Stanton, and then on the right is our new switch gear and new fencing that goes around it, our new concrete pad. So Stanton just got power back yesterday. So I think the contractor's kind of working on making sure all the buildings are um, back up and running at the right um, power amperage and just checking, make sure all the systems are running. Um, and so we're slowly bringing that back up. So next. Slide. Actually, um, can I say something, Sharon? Mm -hmm. I do yes. want to make sure I, I, I um, mention that um, because of the um, the fires and also the um, uh, heat wave that we had last last week, PG&E was scheduled to um, bring power back at Stanton last week, and that didn't happen because of mm -hmm. that. And so I just wanted to share that with you because you're hearing today that uh, power uh, is uh, was back on this week when it was supposed to be last week, and that was because mm -hmm. of the uh, work that needed to be uh, um, uh, done this week to um, allow uh, PG&E to work on other things that obviously in this case, right, uh, more important than what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, we've been, um, it has been challenging to work with uh, PG&E, but we're, we we're able to try to coordinate things and just keep, um, keep on with their project manager and making sure that we stay on their schedule, even when we fall off the schedule, that we get back on the schedule quickly. So um, that's getting done. Uh, then also at Stanton, we um, put up another solar array. So we did three sites. So at Stanton, Chabot, and Creekside. You'll see those pictures later. So um, this one's in the field. Um, towards the back, so it shows the footings in with the columns and the picture from the street on the solar the panels actually up. So next slide. Um, this is Vinoy, our amphitheater and uh, shade structure that's going in right now. So um, this has um, multiple footings and we have a, an ADA ramp that weaves in and out of the seating, which kind of really starts to accentuate the accessibility and um, kind of accent that. So there's the footings being poured and next slide. So to give you a little bit more of what it starts to look like. Um, this is the frame, the kind of almost superstructure of the, the shade structure and on the left and on the right it's you start to see the steps and the ramps and the seating uh, next slide this is what it looks like from the bottom um, so it's a pretty cool structure it's uh it, it makes a, a bold statement um, it's so tall because actually it's governed by the, the height at the top we have to adhere to a certain height for the fire marshal because the top is our, far, our fire lane. So then if you take that and run it across, that's why it's so tall. But yeah, I think it makes kind of a, a nice architectural um, statements aesthetically, I think kind of nice. The actual panels that provide shade will go on in uh, the next week or two. And so it's, it's gonna finish up, I think in September. Next slide, please. And then Vinoy, with their repainting, their colors red, um, so that they're picking the same colors as Canyon. So they have the same red, and which matches the, sh the shade structure was done to match. And so some of the extra painting pictures. Next slide. And then we have um, the HVAC upgrade and technology upgrades. We we've almost finished with most of the technology upgrades at the site. I think um, uh, we have I think one more school to work on. And some of the times when we're working on the technology upgrade, we're also like moving some ducts around if they're in the way. So we uh, had to reroute this HVAC duct at Marshall. Um, so next slide. 
Uh, this is Chabot, um, the parking lot that is between the school. So the parking lot um, that's between the school and the community center. So we have um, new solar right up in that site. Next, next slide, please. This is uh, Creekside with their solar. Um, this is right in the front parking lot. See the footings, kind of the frame going up, and then the panels. Um, next slide, please. And then for Creekside, we've, um, we're pretty much finishing up the modernization for that site. The contractors were on punch list items, but we redid the kind of center courtyard that's behind the admin building and, um, and between the, the mat room. So redoing it so that's a more usable space um, and cleaning up a lot of the ADA um, paving, making it more accessible around the site. So next slide. Uh, a big thing we worked on was the window glazing. Um, over the years, I think the when the glazing gets broken, it gets replaced with a plastic um sheet and then with the new safety window film it doesn't go on plastic so we for all the ones that are plastic and broken we've gone through and reglazed a lot of the windows and put the new film on we also put um kind of the spandrel glass which is the, the green at the bottom for uh, privacy and you see the reflectiveness on the outside um, both the classroom and the admin building so next slide please and then we have our uh, multi-purpose or multi-purpose room cafeteria. So we redid the floors, put in new window shades. We are still waiting for the skylights um, to come. They are covered by wood at this point. It, it ended up being a long lead item. Well, we ended up, um, DSA took a long time to do their deferred approval. There's certain items that DSA wants to, us to go back when we get the final um, shop drawings, as we call it, from the manufacturers and then they review it and it took them like months to review. So we ended up um, ordering this later and then it's, um, I think we're hoping it'll come in mid September. Uh, but this, the, the room is usable. It just doesn't have skylights right now. It just has plywood over those openings and they're, it's protected. Um, and we have new HVAC that have gone in to, um, Wing C, our classroom building. Um, next slide, please. Um, so we redid the flooring and um, the hallways and framing and put up new marker boards, um, painted new HVAC, so kind of different pictures of that um, on the interior side. Next slide, please. And then we get to our, um, our financials. So at this point, We've, um, looking at the total from column A, our, uh, we've expended 80.7 million. We have another 13.2 million encumbered, um, and our total budget is um, 149.2 million. That includes um, all of our different funds, and we are still on budget, and we're on target for what, are we, what we're doing. So that is my update, so any questions? Oh, actually, I think I have more slides that are not Measure G, I remember. <laughs> um, so we, um, outside of Measure G, what we also help coordinate is um, a new building, a new two modular uh, classrooms for the adult school. So that's finished. So a view of the outside and the inside. Um, I think a welcome addition. Uh, we have, I think, ESL and a medical assistant program for CTE going in. And uh, next slide, I think that's it. So now I can take questions. Doc, and then Monica. I don't have any questions. I just wanna say how impressed I am with everything that's happened um, over the summer. Um, and I mean, despite COVID, um, and I really appreciate all of the pictures that you presented to us. Um, it gives us such a great overview of all of the things that are happening in our schools. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Monica and then Parvi. Oh, and Joe. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Dodd. Everything looks really nice. Um, but I just had one question, and I'm sure you've told us this before, but you know, the mind is the first thing to go. Um, Do we put air conditioning in every place, all the schools, as we upgraded the HVAC systems? Yes. So everywhere um, that has new HVAC means there's new AC. So HVAC essentially means heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So that's what HVAC stands for. So um, most of the elementary schools were finishing up, um, you know, Stanton and Indy and Proctor. They had to wait for their power to power the new the AC units. Um, and so Creekside has um, pretty much all the rooms have AC. Um, so that what's left right now is um, half of Canyon and half of the high school. Still, again, those are future projects that are coming up. Harbin, you had your hand up, and then Joe. I was just gonna, um, I was thinking about what uh, Trustee Howard's probably thinking of, the bus tour <laughs> and ribbon cutting. <laughs> because I'm sitting here going, all these great things that have been done, and we don't even have a chance to like, take people on a bus tour. Um, so maybe at some point we can just kind of schedule a visit with everyone with their mask on and coming in their own cars instead of us having the bus. But just some sort of a, you know, because things didn't stop. They just kept going and actually, you know, um, they sped up all the work. I think it's good for people to know. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing that out there for you to consider. Uh, but I, But again, thank you so much to... Sharon and her team and Susie and everybody for doing all the great stuff they've done. So schools are ready and beautiful for kids when they return. Yes. Joe? I also wanted to thank Sharon and her team. Um, I brag about them all the time to other trustees and to our community and tell them what a great job they're doing. And I know that I'm ancient, but I've been through this like four or five times now, and it's always so exciting to see what you can do and how um, not only do you stay on budget, Sharon, but you're stretching it. I mean, mm -hmm. how innovative to take those cabinets that used to have uh, HV in them and teachers couldn't put books on them. Kids had to sit certain ways because it blew in the classroom and all of that. And not only did you take it out and replace it, but you gave a teacher more storage. And in my years, I have never met a teacher who didn't want more storage in her classroom <laughs> or his classroom. It's, it's a priority. So I just want to tell you that I think it's wonderful. And as Parveen said, when the students come back, it'll be wonderful for that occasion. But for me as a member of the governance team, it says to me that this district has a priority on keeping students in a classroom, in an environment that's positive for learning. And we could be spending money on lots of other things, but I really think making a student feel um, like they're valued that their classroom, their school looks great is really important and it really does impact the learning for the students. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Gary, and then I'll say something. i just like to uh, say ditto with what everybody else has said here. This is a lot of terrific work and the, the campuses look really beautiful now and they're on their way to being even better. I mean, if there's one silver lining to the pandemic, and the fact that we have our students at home, it cleared the campuses to let you guys work into the fall with yeah. students around. So it's, it's much safer, clearly, continuing to work with our students at home right now. We wish they weren't, but you gotta look on the bright side of these things. But it is a lot of really terrific work. So thanks for all of that. And I'm looking forward to hearing all the stuff that uh, Gary's been doing here over the summer. Yes, we've all been busy. Last thing, I just, um, you know, everybody said a lot. I just want to say how smart it was. I want to call out you picking same paint colors for inventory purposes. I thought that was awesome. 
Um, so way to go for that. And um, thank you again for all of the work that you're doing um, to keep our schools safe. Um, and especially thanks to all your staff, Gary. Um, you can let them know that we're really appreciative of all the hard work that they're putting in to keep everybody safe. Thank you. Okay, so okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Krebs. Um, he has a few slides um, that he is going to go over with you. And then after that, um, we'll open it up, it up for questions or comments. Thank you, Susie. And thank you, uh, Superintendent uh, Mahdi and trustees for giving me a quick moment. Mine isn't uh, nearly as long as uh, Sharon's, but uh, it's got a little bit of excitement in it. So if we can go on to the next slide. So at Canyon, uh, we applied uh, a new slurry coat. Uh, in doing so, we smoothed out the traffic flow, installed uh, clear delineations on where the bus zone is. Uh, if you'd been up there while um, school was in session, uh, sometimes kids were, were um, all over the parking lot. So we kind of tried to address that with clear pedestrian pathways, as well as uh, pick up and drop off zones. This picture here, uh, it, we weren't quite complete when we took the picture. So there's additional signs that go in the crosswalks and we're putting additional signs uh, along the sidewalks and uh, whatnot. So um, I think that's going to make a big difference on the flow. The smoothness of the uh, pickup and drop off uh, at Canyon is coming here when we get back into regular uh, session. Uh, next, next slide, please. So at uh, the Proctor Arts Center, uh, we took this opportunity to go in and do some uh, drywall repairs inside, uh, gave it a complete uh, uh, new paint job, cleaned it up a little bit so that it's uh, kind of freshened up to match the outside paint job that uh, Sharon had given it. And next slide, please. So district-wide, we've been working on uh, or uh, doing a lot of uh, tree work. Uh, in addition to the fire abatement work that we do at uh, some of the schools, uh, in particular Canyon and uh, Independent, uh, to eliminate some of the growth around the homes there, uh, or between our campus and the homes. Uh, we've uh, cleared the brush uh, from five feet uh, down uh, on trees and brush so that uh, if there were to have a fire breakout, we've extended that. The fire uh, requirement is 100 feet. We've expended that to 150 feet this year. So uh, we've it's a blessing. Uh, we've routinely gotten calls from uh, concerned neighbors this time of the year. This year, we've gotten none. So we're, uh, we're ahead of the game. We're uh, being a good neighbor. Uh, additionally, uh, we've gone through and started thinning out some of our uh, overgrowth of trees. Uh, some of our trees were becoming uh, wind cells. So they were, uh, when we had high winds, we were losing trees, causing uh, definite safety hazard, um, as well as a fire problem if uh, one of them caught on fire. A lot of them were either uh, very close to being dead or dead. Uh, so we've thinned those out, shaped them, uh, given them a better chance to uh, grow a little bit longer and a little healthier and, and have a stronger root base because they're not fighting for uh, space on the ground. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is an annual thing that we do. We go through now, uh, do our storm drain cleaning, uh, hydro jet the uh, storm drains so that uh, we have less chance for water back up onto our campuses. Uh, and it, actually it's a compliance issue, but uh, it's something that uh, um, typically isn't uh, uh, observed. Uh, so uh, we're ahead of the game on that, uh, making sure that our storm drains are flowing well. Our V ditches along some of our hillsides here are uh, being cleaned out. Most all of them are, have been cleaned out. We're still working on it, trying to get ready for the upcoming season. Uh, as I said, the grounds work for fire prevention. We've continued uh, pesticide herbicide application and uh, uh, reporting uh, with the DPR. I'll speak a little bit more on that on a future slide. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, the CHP and the motor carrier terminal inspections were conducted. And uh, we came through it without one uh, deficiency. Uh, that's uh, something that's very rare in the uh, bus transportation, school bus transportation industry. So uh, Tracy Vieira is doing an awesome job as uh, transportation 
a supervisor. Um, we've already gone through and replaced uh, HVAC filters. We're going back through now and doing it again and, and uh, commencing with our every 90 days. Uh, the filters that we buy are rated as one year uh, filters. Uh, we have never had them in place for a year. We've uh, historically uh, replaced them every six months. But with uh, the conditions that we're in now, we're moving them up to every 90 days. And we're looking, working with uh, Sharon to see what our other options are um, in regards to air filtration. Um, we've gone through uh, the, the school district once and uh, done uh, a, a complete uh, inventory and uh, removal of the heavy, uh, so to speak, the, the more uh, aged um, hazardous materials from science wings and so on, uh, old chemicals, whatnot. Now we're going back through and removing uh, paint. Uh, we're recording it, uh, you, uh, getting a hazmat uh, manifest and making sure that those are uh, disposed of properly. Uh, you may recall last year we had a problem at Canyon with uh, feral pigs. Uh, we now have it at three campuses, um, but I'm happy to say that uh, we've, uh, with some of the remediation that we've put in, uh, we had just a little bit of damage at uh, Vanoy and a little bit of a canyon, and it's been addressed and taken care of. So even with the, the rapid uh, explosion of uh, feral pigs in the area, we've uh, been able to um, uh, make a little bit of progress and keeping them off the campuses. So uh, bleacher and athletic equipment certification. What that is, is uh, each year you need to have uh, the bleachers, um, the uh, me mechanisms that lift the uh, basketball backboards up and down in the gyms. Those all have to be inspected and certified as safe and compliant. Uh, we've completed that. And of course, uh, we've gone through and done all of our uh, summer cleaning and disinfecting in all of our campuses. Next slide, please. So district-wide, we you may have noticed that we've started installing uh, redwood uh, fir, uh, shredded redwood. And uh, the purpose of that is uh, when you put it down thick enough, it really curtails the weed growth. So the uh, our, our goal is to have this at most all of our campuses, all of our campuses and all of our uh, more uh, weed prone areas to really curtail uh, the use of pesticide. You may recall last year we eliminated the use of uh, Roundup or glyphosate on all of our campuses. Um, we still have to use a chemical, uh, but we're, this is really going to cut back on how much spraying we have to do and, and uh, that'll be a big help. Additionally, it uh, really retains the moisture. So when uh, these areas are watered, the moisture stays in the ground, doesn't evaporate so quickly. So we're hoping to save on pesticide use. We expect to save on pesticide use, the cost of pesticides and application of manpower doing that, as well as uh, cut down on our um, uh, water demand that we have at these campuses. So you'll notice uh, the adult school and uh, uh, Redwood have received it. Uh, the next school is Stanton and uh, Canyon will be getting that. And uh, you'll see that come up. It's pretty obvious when you drive up and see it, it's uh, pretty eye catching. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so these are in, in each of our buses and our vans, uh, we've installed the touchless hand sanitizer dispensers. So um, as the students get on, they automatically, they can uh, get their hand sanitizer and uh, hop on the bus and away they go. They'll have signs on the bus indicating where seats, which seats can uh, they can use uh, depending on how the protocol unfolds. Uh, additionally, we have age appropriate signs on the bus and on the vans uh, going through the social distancing protocols, the healthy habits and uh, um, that we'll just continue adding to those signage as the CDC or the uh, Alameda County Department of Public Health uh, recommends or mandates. So next slide, please. Okay, so here we've got our, uh, the top three on the left, those are different hand sanitizers. Uh, you'll notice a couple different brands there. Um, 
early on, we were purchasing this in, in bulk to get ahead of the uh, rush. And uh, I'm happy to say that we were pretty successful in it. We've got a good stock of hand sanitizer gel, hand sanitizer spray, um, as well as uh, disinfectant. Uh, so all of the disinfectant that we've got is um, disinfectant that is uh, efficient enough. The efficacy is to the point where you don't, do not have to wipe it off. The dwell time is a kill time and uh, there is no residue that's left on there. Um, the early on we had uh, Alpate, you may recall, had a pretty uh, medicine-y smell. It smelled like you just got a shot or something. We still have that, uh, but it's evolved. Now we've got a, when we went to Virex and now we have a Purell product that has a very slight uh, lemon smell, has a 30 second to one minute uh, dwell time. And again, it, it's, as it, with the others, it evaporates and leaves no residue. So um, we've got uh, not quite as much of the Purell, but we've got enough that uh, we, we're not concerned at this point uh, of running out for quite some time, even if we were to get back to um, in-person teaching. Uh, we have the, uh, the you'll see, see the touchless uh, hand sanitizer there. We've got those in stock. We purchased those. We have them at uh, each campus now. One at uh, the front of, typically at the front of the office, for instance, a canyon, one at the back entrance, so people are coming and going into the office. Uh, we have hand wash stations at the entrance to each office. Uh, we have on the hand wash stations, we have those reserves. So as we move forward in this process, uh, we have access to more of those, uh, more than I think we will need, uh, but I wanted to make sure that we had access to them. Additionally, the same goes with the uh, touchless hand sanitizers. Uh, those are ours um, and we have those in stock. They're assembled and ready to go. Uh, when we get to that point, we can spread them out through the uh, campus. Um, each uh, classroom and common area staff, workroom, kitchen and common office has a dedicated spray bottle disinfectant, uh, a roll of paper towels and sanitizer available to them. So as uh, we move forward or as uh, staff are in a classroom, those items are in that classroom available too. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, this, these are some of the kind of a demonstration of some of the uh, appropriate uh, reminders of social distancing protocols. Um, and uh, regarding six foot spacing, masks, uh, healthy habits, uh, directional signs. Uh, this happens to be at uh, Canyon uh, Middle School. So uh, next slide, please. So these are, you can't really see them, but I promise they're there. Uh, the sneeze guards, um, the one in the center there is uh, one of many at the high school. We have them around each uh, house uh, secretary, um, area uh, going into um, the, the main office and so on. We're also putting up the little strip barriers in uh, between and doorways. So uh, staff or people can't just walk into say a counselor's office without uh, making contact and verbal contact and uh, then moving the, it's kind of the magnetic strip that goes across similar to what's at a bank. Uh, you've got on the uh, bottom left, you have uh, the Creekside Middle School. That's it's, it's really hard to tell, but I promise it's there. Um, sneeze guard uh, right above that at Redwood. And then uh, you have, we have, I think the other one is at uh, Alma. So uh, next slide. Okay, this is the center picture there is at uh, Marshall. That's uh, kind of an indication of uh, what they'll find as they come in. You've got the, our appropriate signage as recommended by this CDC and Alameda County, as well as your uh, touchless hand sanitizer. As they walk in, they'll have, there's a bottle of hand sanitizer and a disinfectant and a roll of paper towels also in the office. Uh, on the left, on the top, um, we have, let me back up just a little bit. So at each entrance to all of our offices, the signage is there. And uh, so everybody's reminded of the proper healthy habits. We've also gone back and at the, the gates uh, where we, we've identified as typical entrance gates at each campus, we've uh, installed the signs as well, similar signs. Um, 
the uh, on the left there on the bottom, that's in one of the staff lounges at uh, Marshall, uh, indicating that as you walk in, that would be the flow of traffic and where the, uh, the chairs should be uh, positioned to maintain the, the six foot uh, social distancing um, in that room. Um, and then to the right there is as you walked in, the, the uh, door there, you'll see the uh, sneeze guard is up on uh, above the counter and uh, you can just barely see the hand sanitizer bottle sitting on the counter there. Um, I think that's, that is the, the end of the slides. Do I have any questions? I see uh, Joe and then Dot. Well, thank you for the report, Gary. Um, you know, I think that you and your crew have been on the front lines of a season of unknowns. <laughs> and um, I'm really impressed with how you've responded and the um, way that the crew that you work with have stepped up um, the, in the COVID era. But I'm also, and I've told you this for, since you got there, I'm very impressed with how proactive you are in looking at keeping our schools economical, ecological, and safe for our students and our staff. And I'm, again, I'll repeat what I said to Sharon was that it's amazing how important it is to a child to come to school and have a nice facility. And a big part of that is that it's clean. And what you and your staff do is amazing. Um, and I love that the um, mulch will do both uh, weeds and water. That's great. So I hope you go back to your staff and tell them how impressed that we are with the work that they're doing because um, I think there's been a lot of questions about their abilities, but I haven't had any questions about it. So thank you. Thank you. Stop. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, the, um, all of the signage and the arrows and the, um, the plexiglass sneeze guards work so well. They look so great. The fact that it was hard to see them, I think, is a testament to how well you've designed them and installed them, that they blend so well in with, with the offices that they're, they're put into. So thank you very much for all of that effort that went into that. Um, and thank you for talking about the changing out of the um, filters that go into the HVAC system. I appreciate knowing about that. Um, I had a question about the trees. You mentioned trimming the trees because some of them were getting uh, where it could be dangerous in a big windstorm. Um, is there a regular tree health inspection or is it something that, you know, if somebody has a question about the health of a tree, then you call someone out or is there a regular rotation for that? Yeah, so, so uh, a lot of our trees haven't uh, had any attention for, for many years. Um, so we're, we're doing a little bit of catch up. I think we've, we've uh, covered a, probably most all of the major projects on the tree end. Um, and the process on that is to do an inspection of the trees. Um, take a look, see how, how close they are, um, how they're intermingling with the trees next to themselves. Are they, uh, sometimes the bigger trees drown out the smaller trees. Um, and then the big tree dies and the little tree's dead. So um, there's a lot of different ways that we're looking at it, but yes, we, we're looking at the trees constantly to make sure, look at it from a safety standpoint, from a hazard standpoint and a health standpoint. So, yeah. Are there any questions, Harvey? Yeah, not, not question again. I, I'm just, you know, I keep repeating, I'm very fortunate to be the superintendent because I get to work with amazing people like you just heard. So, and I want people to know this is why we feel really comfortable being at work because of all the things that um, they put in place and, and how everything looks. So thank you, Gary. It's a, thank you, I appreciate that. It's not just me, it's I've got a wonderful staff that take it to heart and really do take pride in what they're doing. So thank you. Trustee Howard. 
Yeah, I don't have any questions. Uh, it's a great report. And uh, I just want to echo what everybody else has said that you and your team have done fantastic work. And we really appreciate all of that. So, you know, this is, I've been around Castro Valley Schools for 20 some years. And I think this is maybe the best handle we've had on it. We've had a lot of good people, but I think this is about the best we've ever had. So thanks a lot for all that hard. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Susie, um, Gary, and Sharon. Thank you. Have a safe evening. We will move on to item 8C, assignment of board members to PTA Parent Club meetings for 2021. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a routine item we have every year. Um, so Ms. Cayera already. I just, it's a little bit, might be small to see, but there is one um, that I do need somebody to volunteer for, and that's uh, Jensen Ranch on October 13th. I'll take that one. Thank you. So we're good, we're set. And this is an action item. Move that we approve the uh, parent club assignments with that one change of adding Monica to Jensen's. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Shane, your preferential vote? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Move on to item 8D adopt resolution 16 2021 to excuse the absence of Trustee Joe A. Loss, Joe A. S. Loss on August 12, 2020. I'll make a motion that we adopt resolution 16 20 21 to excuse the absence of Trustee Loss on August 12, 2020. I'll second it. And moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Shane, your preferential vote? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. We move on to item 8E to adopt the minutes from the board meeting held on August 12, 2020. I'll move to adopt the last board meeting minutes. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Shane, your preferential vote. Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. There is no public comment, so we will move on to superintendent's report. Superintendent Amadi. Yes. So um <clears throat> Been, we've been busy, um, lots of meetings virtually. Uh, today I had um, our um, superintendent's meeting with the county and we had the public health uh, department joining us each time we have a meeting. Um, just, you know, kind, kind of an update that we are still on the watch list because I believe we still have over a hundred or a hundred thousand. So we're not uh, doing as well as we should. <laughs> countywide or, or statewide. Um, we really talked a lot about um, contact tracing and I believe that the health department is gonna put something together for us to help us out because um, you know, with just anybody on site, obviously we have to, you know, we um, have to follow up on cases. So we have all of that in place. Um, they, uh, we did receive guidance as I um, have um, shared, I actually shared um, yesterday um, at, on CV News when I was on there that we did get uh, guidance from uh, the California Health Department as well as the uh, county on how to, um, some of the things that we need to have in place um, should we have um, some sort of a hub, not in-person instruction, but for some students and some services that we need to um, have in place. Um, we also had a really great presentation from UCSF um, on distance learning and equity. Um, very focused, this is the third uh, session they've had and, and it's really valuable. Uh, 
I wanted to say just a little bit about attendance and engagement tracking. So a part of what's required while um, students are distance learning is for us to not only take attendance, even though we're held harmless, but we do get penalty if we don't follow these rules. So we have attendance that we usually take and all students are supposed to be attending school 180 days, but we also have something new under um, SB 98 that says we have to track weekly engagement and it's very involved. It's about how much each student is actually participating every single day for every part of the day, like asynchronous and synchronous. So it's pretty complicated and the form that they um, have come up with so far is, is really cumbersome. So we're, they're, we're all working together to see if there are other ways to do that so that it's not, um, it doesn't take a whole lot more time than, uh, than we should really be spending on it, but it is pretty involved and, and a requirement. So we'll be working on that. Um, I, I asked all of our principals, uh, first of all, it's really tough to start a school year where you don't get to see students in person um, I mean, in previous years, I would have already visited, uh, you know, every school and have seen students and so have you and we don't have that, but at least, you know, um, moving forward, I get to drop in and actually see them online, hopefully once in a while. But at this point, I just wanted to kind of get a feel for what's happening in all of our schools and, and the um, information I've received from uh, our principals is that there is uh, engagement, students are actually engaging, um, that the first seven days, it was really great to have what was set up so that teachers actually had time to plan, to collaborate, to assess students. Some of the assessments are taking longer than, um, you, you know, that, than we thought, uh, but it was really good to do it that way. Um, uh, also, just a lot of, um, you know, great lessons that are happening, Meals are uh, provided for students and that's going well. Computers have been provided to every student who um, uh, we have them for every student and um, we still have students picking them up um, if they hadn't picked them up before school. Um, one of the things, and, and, and schools are checking with families, we are having some, um, some difficulty reaching some families. Um, and so that's the, the call that um, administrators and the district office staff are making sometimes even going to someone's home to see if they are there, if, you know, they're still participating and what we can do to support them. One of the biggest challenges that we have, um, actually some of the biggest challenges we have are uh, related to technology. Um, and that's because of bandwidth. Um, I think with everyone in the household using technology because you know people are working from home and there you know there may be two or three students on the same bandwidth even the best service that some of us have um, from Comcast or AT&T or any company that isn't uh, doesn't really suffice um, and it's really difficult so we have great bandwidth at schools um, especially now that we've updated it to just you know to the nth degree um, but unfortunately, kids are at home. Um, you know, if they actually come to school, they could, but they're not in school. So that's a challenge for many of our families, even with the MiFi's that we have given some of the students who need it. Um, so, you know, in a conversation with uh, Fremont Bank was looking at, well, how do we support students or Comcast? I think there are ways to, for big corporations to actually help like Comcast but I haven't seen it yet to the degree that we want. I know we're working behind the scene on a, a couple of things, but that is one big challenge that our students have with technology. Um, and hopefully, you know, at some point we can have some sort of hubs for, to help some families. Um, one of the issues that we're finding is that before people would worry about downloading things and you needed a lot of bandwidth for that, but now students have to actually upload things. So then you need additional bandwidth. So I would say technology is the issue that almost everybody's dealing with statewide um, and we're uh, no different, uh, but at least we have provided what we can to our students. Um, 
And then uh, we did the other thing I wanted to say, see, uh, the California Department of Education, I actually just received the email from the, this afternoon and forwarded it to Dr. Ryman that our, um, they approved our addendum. The federal government requires that we have an addendum to our LCAP and that was done. Uh, Dr. Ryman finished that and sent it in and it was approved. Um, so staffing were set. Um, again, you know, looking at human resources, educational services and business division, seeing all the work that's done, I wanna just uh, thank them for all of that. We did have a really great Community Alliance book club uh, on how to be an anti-racist. And we had, I think 19 people and uh, trustee loss actually uh, facilitated it. Um, the uh, book club and it, the, the book study and it went really, really well. So that's it. Thank you, Superintendent Amadi. We'll move on to board member comments and reports. Shane, is there anything else you want to share with us tonight? Yeah, sure. I have a few things. Um, so I've just been working with my fellow ASB officers to create like virtual events for the high school so we could stay connected. Um, I've been working alongside our ASB president, Alex Akuma, um, with the Social Emotional Learning Committee. And over the summer, a California Student Board Member Association was created so I joined, that, I joined that pretty early on. So we've been just reaching out and trying to grow our following. And our ultimate goal is to gain more of like a student presence on the California Board of Education and hopefully a vote. Great, thank you, Shane. Dot. All right, today's National Dog Day. That's why I had my dog on my lap. <laughs> um, Let's see, uh, la a couple weeks ago, there was an East Bay Coalition meeting with um, the Public Health Department. So Dr. Moss was on that. Um, and he spent some time talking about the different indicators that, um, that we would be looking at um, to determine whether or not the county is ready to open schools. And then he talked about how at this time, uh, schools, schools in general could apply for um, I guess a waiver, I forget what the term is, to open schools, but at this time Alameda County is not even considering them. So, I mean, that's the situation that we're in. So it was a good, uh, a good meeting um, and seeing the other faces of other board members who are going through this as we all are um, was good. And um, what I hope comes out of that is an, a greater opportunity for board members to interact with the public health department. Um, and that's it. My, I have two high schoolers and they're, um, they're muddling through it. Uh, they actually were both um, glad to be back into some sort of regular school mode and they I could hear their engagement in their classroom so I have to give our teachers such big props for um, coming to this point and having um, having engaging um, interactions with the students I hear music going on in my daughter's room and um, Spanish being spoken and and so it's for them or for me it's been great I don't know if it's been great for them and you know the connectivity issues that you talked about Parveen are real um, you know we've got two grown-ups working and two kids now working so it's all challenging and it's all imperfect but it's all moving along so I think our teachers are doing an amazing job that's it thank you Doc. Joe well, I want to welcome Shane. Um, I discovered that if I plug my headphones in, it turns everything off. <laughs> so I now know that I won't do that again when I'm trying to get something turned on. But Shane, welcome to the board. We look forward to working with you this year. Um, it is also Women's Equality Day, and it's to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. And there are literally thousands of events going on across the nation, but one that's exciting and local is that they're going to be lighting up a lot of our national landmarks with purple, gold, and white lights. And tonight they'll be doing the Golden Gate Bridge. So if you get a chance to check that out online, that would 
I think it's going to be really exciting. So since the last board meeting, we've had two ROP meetings and we have approved the budget for next year. We had a little bit of a hiccup, an unknown, in that the state has not included ROPs in the PPE allotment. So we had to um, make quite a substantial investment in PPE. And it's something that I think we need to advocate. Uh, the money went to the county and the county did not give ROPs any money for PPE. So that's an issue for us. We started school on the 17th and as everyone's mentioned, our technology went down um, two days later. And so uh, the ROP um, is looking at also having to make a substantial investment in technology to keep our students engaged. Um, I listened to the California Latino School Boards Association webinar on systemic racism. And what was interesting was that they had presentations from a wide variety of ethnicities. They had Native Americans, Latinx, um, his, uh, uh, African American, uh, just a huge array. So it was a very interesting workshop. I think Gary, you were going to listen to um, the Community Alliance book um, discovery went very well. Um, we had a hard ad hoc meeting. Um, I also attended the Mosaic Color of Law, and I sent that to you. If you get a chance to spend an hour, I think you'd find that a very interesting presentation. Um, on behalf of the board, I attended Gail Steele's um, memorial, and I spoke at the Dublin Rotary um, two weeks ago, and also participated in the USC survey about the CSBA Masters of Governance. Um, and then wearing my league hat, I just wanna tell you that there, we have at least um, 12 candidates nights scheduled between now and the election. Um, I encourage you to tell people, um, I don't know how else people are going to learn about candidates versus virtual candidates nights. So um, you can always ask me, but look on our league website and um, the um, lineup for uh, uh, positions is extremely robust. I mean, Hayward City Council has 13 people alone running. So it's a really good opportunity for people to uh, become educated voters and also to look on line at Voters Edge, which allows candidates to list their positions and their policies for you to read on your own. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Gary? Um, I think the only things that I've done uh, are not really official things. They've been related to Rotary. Um, and one is our vocational committee is doing very well right now. They're linked in very closely with Abraham Mendoza and also with Linda Granger. And uh, they are uh, in a position to actually set up some internships, which is uh, pretty significant, I think. So I'm looking forward to a lot of good work out of those, those people. Uh, the other thing I'll point out is that the Rotary Grants period is open and we don't have a lot of money this year because uh, it's been a tough year for everybody, but we're accepting grant applications up to September 15th. And that grant information is on our website, castrovalleyrotary.org. And the last thing I have is a question. And um, are any of you by chance members of AAUW? I, I thought Parveen and Joe probably were, and I think Janice. I I'd like to talk to you at a separate time about that. Uh, but in the near, very near future. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Monica, over to you. Sorry, I don't know my computer sometimes glitches. Yeah, yeah I thought you were frozen. Um, so I did the ad hoc meeting with Joe and also the community alliance, the how how to be anti-racist. Joe did a great job of moderating. Um, 
I think it went really well and there's quite a great discussion. Um, and I attended the parent leadership meeting this last, last week, I believe last Wednesday, which was also you know, always good discussion there. Thank you, Monica. Um, and I, Monica, she um, did go to the leadership council meeting on my behalf. We switched dates. I had a, a, another meeting and was dealing with air quality issues. So thank you again, Monica, for your support. I really appreciate that. For myself, I also um, participated in the UC CSBA MIG um, study um, survey and just periodic communications with Parveen. And that is it for me. So with that, I wanted to thank everyone for their participation and for all of you joining us from the community and listening into the Castro Valley Unified School District Board meeting. Thank you for all of our board members and staff and Shane, welcome again. We thank wish you, oh, Doc? There was a hand up. Sorry, that's all I was trying to say, but now the hand is gone. Never mind. <laughs> Great. Um, with that, we wish you all a safe, healthy, and happy evening. Please take care of.